Okay. We are now recording, so I'll call the meeting to order. Minutes uh, will be taken by John, our vice chair. John, are you here? Looks like Columbia Gorge is connected, but not doesn't have audio. Uh, we will be recording the meeting so we can uh, compile the minutes from that. Do I have another one? Do I need to write one down? <laughs> oh, girl! <laughs> okay, and that's a good reminder um, to reduce background noise. I'm going to keep everyone muted uh, for the bulk of the meeting. If you'd like to make a comment, please unmute yourself and make that comment. Uh, we'll begin with a roll call, uh, so please unmute yourself and say you're here, or hello everyone, or something as I call your name. Uh, so Delia Wallace, are you here, Delia? Okay, well, I'll just go through and read the people that are listed. Let me, let me unmute everyone. Delia, are you here? Hello. <laughs> Hello, we're now taking roll call. Is Delia present? Okay. Oh my gosh. Delia is listed on the attendees, but not responding. Uh, Anne Zwelke, are you present? Okay, she is not listed on the attendance list and not responding. We'll say that's no. Teresa Chandler, are you present? Like they're entering smarty pants territory, and it just doesn't make sense. I mean, they're they're sounding smarty pants more. Then. Okay, Teresa Chandler is not here. Can you guys hear us? Yes, I can hear you. You're very faint, though, Buzzy. Oh, okay, well, that's something. That's better than nothing. Okay. We're working on it. Okay. Anne, Anne is here. Anne is here, okay. Pat Florenson, are you present? Okay. Pat is not. Debbie Lind, is Debbie Lind here today? Okay. No, Debbie Dia, I believe you are here. Hello. Great. Amy Hutchinson, are you here? Okay, no, Amy. Uh, Ryan, I see you're connected. Can you say hello? Ryan? Okay, Ryan, I can see you're connected, but we can't hear you if you're speaking. Um, Darlene? Johnson, are you here? Darlene from Ontario? No. Okay, Mary Finney, you are showing us attending. Can you say hello? Hello. 
Can anybody hear us in Columbia Gorge? Yeah, I can hear you now, Buzzy. You've got a feedback of a echo. Okay, and I believe Columbia Gorge is John. Linda Stahl, are you here? I am. Great. Okay, that we do have a quorum. Hi, Ryan. Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay. Whenever I get muted by the GoToMeeting, my microphone doesn't work after I am unmuted. Oh, interesting. For some reason. Okay. After a while. I don't know why. So I'll just mute at my microphone and hopefully, and then I'll just use my uh, okay. Sounds good. Windows mute function. And hopefully that will stop me from being dropped like that. Okay. All right. Uh, so let me just log in the rest of the people. We have someone registered as Sage. I think that might be Buzzy. Um, Perry, it's me. That's you, Beth? OK. Yeah. And who is admin? OK, don't know who that is. Brent is here, Cheryl Hancock, we have two connections Hi, from Columbia Gorge, David is here, David Sale, Delia we already noted was present, Deneen, Uh, somebody from Hermiston, who is that? Hey, Perry, it's Marie. Marie, hi. Okay, Mary Finney, Mary Reeser, Mary Lou Martin, and Ryan. Okay. Okay, with the roll call completed, um, we'll now move on to additions and deletions from the agenda. Did, but before we do that, did I miss anyone? Is anyone attending whose name I did not call? We still don't know who is listed as admin. Uh, Gary? Yeah, Buzzy. Who do you uh, have we there? Have, uh, I, I, have, I can't figure out how to get the echo to stop. I'm sorry. We have um, the... Um, Maggie Pando from the Dallas. Okay. Um, John. John from Columbia Gorge is there? Yes. Okay. And you you already got Ann, right? Yes. Um, Linda Stahl. Linda Stahl. Great. Yep, got you. Um, Jack Wabrunek, or however you pronounce your name. Sorry, who was that? Jack from the Dow. Okay. And I think that's it. Hearing up Brent. Okay. Anybody else who we haven't identified as attending? Okay, moving on to the agenda. Any additions and deletions? Um, I did have a note from uh, Cheryl Hancock uh, for a suggestion to amend the agenda. Cheryl, do you want to speak about that? Yes, I'd like to um, bring it up to the council about the Learning Express MARC records that are available to download into our catalog. Okay. So we have a suggestion to amend the minutes or amend the agenda, include that as a new item. 
would uh, someone like to make a motion to approve the agenda as amended? Hey, Harry, this is about Nick. Yeah. Uh, those of us here in the Dallas would like to add an item about discussing changing the meeting time back to 10. Okay. You can add that as a new item as well. And we couldn't quite hear Cheryl very well. What, what was the agenda item she added? Cheryl wants to discuss adding Learning Express mark records into the catalog, which was in the announced in the letters to Libraries Online in January that those are available. Okay, so two new items, uh, moving the meeting back to 10 a.m. and adding Learning Express mark records. Do I have a motion to approve the agenda with those additions? This is the yellow that we... Okay, motion from Dia. Is there a second? Second. And seconds. Okay. Any objections? Hello. Hello. Who's joining us? Well, this is this is Mary Finney. Can you hear me? Well, yeah, we can hear you, Mary. Good. Thank you. Okay. Hearing no objections, the agenda will stand as amended. Has anyone had a chance to review the minutes from the previous meeting that were posted on the wiki? Originally uh, created by John and I made some edits. Are there any suggested corrections? Any discussion about those? Okay, hearing no objections, the minutes will stand as distributed. We'll now move on to the open forum for general membership. Would anyone like to make a comment on a topic not already on the agenda? Okay, hearing none, we'll move on to reports, uh, beginning with uh, Beth and Brent. We did have a uh, written report submitted that was included in your packet. Hope you, hopefully you've had a chance to look at that. Um, Beth and Brent, do you want to highlight any items from that? Hello, can you hear me? This is Brent. Hi, Brent. So, um, uh, is it okay if I just go over a few items, Beth, or if there's some that you want to highlight? That's fine. No, I can chime in later if, uh, if you want. All right. Um, well, uh, to kind of highlight a few items on the written report was something. Um, I guess the most um, important was that we've worked with
documentation site, uh, some new training materials that I've kind of created and worked with other libraries' materials, um, which I'll post in the chat. Um, it's under circulation support on the wiki. There's a, about a 70 page <coughs> circulation uh, manual for in general, kind of very comprehensive, some materials for new hires, uh, training agendas, a cheat sheet for frontline kind of circulation staff, and um, receipt templates uh, for libraries that wish to kind of customize hold slips, <coughs> uh, hold slips, transit slips, um, and all the other kind of receipts that can be generated through them. Okay, and this is Beth. I just um, want to comment uh, the cataloging, circulation, logins, and permissions are almost all the way complete. I just have a few branch logins to adjust. The um, wanted to talk about um, borrowing from EOU just briefly. I sent out a bunch of logins and passwords to sites last night, um, sites that hadn't already asked for a way to borrow from EOU and sent some instructions along with that as well. And I don't want to take up a lot of time, but if anybody has any questions about our update, we'd be glad to entertain those now. Brent, this is Dia. I just had a quick question on the checkout limit increase. Is it 35 to 60 or 35 to 50? 50. Thank you. This is Dee again. Brent, I had a chance to look at those um, training materials that you posted, and there's some good stuff in there. Thank you for doing that. The screenshots that are included in those materials are current with our version of the training and our materials as well, so they should match up what you see when you are logged in. Okay. Thank you, Beth and Brent. We'll move on to the Budget Committee and Financial Statement. Um, the I did get a new version of the packet uh, uploaded onto the wiki, so that includes a monthly uh, profit and loss report and a quarterly. Those are also under the budget um, page of the wiki. Um, a couple of items to discuss from the quarterly report, we can see um, some items that are uh, in red that might be of concern as a high percentage being spent. Um, the dues and subscriptions, I got a detail on that and that looks to be a posting error. Those are mostly Cat Express charges. So those either need to be uh, posted somewhere else or maybe um, that line will be reimbursed down by other members. The office uh, supplies is high due to uh, setting up the finance, finances for SAGE. We had to order checks and get a ticket book order and an endorsement stamp. So those were just higher than uh, anticipated. 
Uh, so we'll make a correction on that budget here later in the year. The development uh, line is 71% 70, um, spent. That includes um, website charges and book jacket images and uh, paying for the new logo. And telecommunications, that was high due to our late implementation of the GoToMeeting. So there are, uh, uh, what it, whatever, the Telspan charges and then also the $230 uh, dollar subscription for GoToMeeting plus the uh, TechSoup charge for accessing that. And for training, that includes charges for the uh, RDA course that Beth signed up for. So I'm not sure if that needs to remain in training or if that needs to be in cataloging. Um, we'll look yeah, at that. That should, that should go to cataloging. Okay. Larry, we can make that so that would, that would come down significantly if we moved that out. Any questions about the financial report? Okay, hearing none, we'll move on. We will be uh, addressing the proposed budget later on the agenda. Cataloging committee. Is there someone here representing the cataloging committee that would like to make a report? Sarah is not here. Sarah's not here, okay. Uh, is, is David here? I, I don't remember. Uh, this is David. I, I am here. And, um, well, where to, uh, where to begin with a, a report? I'd given one to the um, cataloging, other members of the cataloging committee earlier to um, announce that we have completed a round of Nebraska training uh, with 15 students. Uh, there actually, I guess it's 16, there was a, a late addition who's not completed, completed the course yet. Um, and next week we'll be holding um, the first of three um, go-to-meeting sessions for uh, special topics in cataloging to sort of uh, do some more advanced topics. Um, if you're on the cataloging committee listserv, you probably got an email about that. Uh, next week's is going to be on um, subject and genre headings. Um, the following month, uh, April, we'll be doing one on series headings. And then after that, um, audio-visual cataloging techniques. Or I may reverse the order of those last two, depending on uh, interest from attendees. Um, thanks to the GoToMeeting features here, um, those sessions will be recorded and distributed to folks who are not able to attend the live session. Um, also, um, Beth will be presenting here findings from the uh, catalog user survey. I'll leave that to her when she wants to introduce that. And I guess I can answer any questions that folks might have. Okay, hearing no questions for David, we'll move on. Uh, circulation committee remains inactive, still looking for a chair for that, if anyone would like to volunteer. Career committee, uh, I did get a message from Dan Fail of uh, Umatilla County Special Library District. Um, he seemed willing to have his arm twisted to become chair, uh, so if uh, Beth would like to address career issues and call a meeting, 
we could probably get him to be to, to be the chair. Um, Perry, this is Beth. We actually had a meeting already. Oh, did you already? Okay. We did, and we plan on meeting every other month. And so we had some good discussion of career issues. Um, basically, um, the need for more bags, the need for um, better communication amongst all the libraries in regards to ILL courier. So um, we decided to revitalize the CERC listserv and use it for that purpose. And so I've added um, at least one member from every library to the CERC listserv, and we're going to start using that for when people need to put a call out for bags or um, have other ILL issues. And um, this is probably a, a good point to address. Um, we've had some issues with mixed um, boxes or bags um, being sent out, so I'm going to be posting a message to the listserv to remind people to individually package items in green bags. So I'm just trying to think of what else. Uh, it's a good meeting, good to get started again. And um, career is very important, so it's not, it, we have to make sure it's running smoothly. So did Dan become the chair at that meeting? He, um, he did, yes. Okay. Does anybody have any questions for the Courier Committee? Well, thank you. Um, I don't know that we have a procedure for recognizing committee chairs, but it probably wouldn't hurt to have that formally documented in our in our meetings. Would someone like to make a motion to recognize Dan Fail as the new chair of the Courier Committee? This is this is Dia. I would recommend that we recognize Dan Fail as the chair for the Courier Committee. Okay. We have a second? Ryan and Legrand. I'll second. Okay. It's been motioned and seconded for Dan Fail to become the chair of the cataloging or the career committee. Any objections? Hearing none, we congratulate Dan. Moving on to development committee. Anything to note there, Beth or Brent? Well, Beth, I think we had, we talked about doing the next upgrade sometime in the beginning of April is what we're kind of shooting around. Yeah, I'm still waiting to hear um, a definite date, but that that's our target, yes. And is that a significant evergreen update with new features that Uh, I think it's fairly significant. Um, we can publish a list of changes out to the group when we when we have a date. I don't think it's as, as significant as maybe 2.8 will be, but since we're on 2.5, I think it's important to move to 2.7. And there are some clear advantages. Okay. Moving on to the Governance Committee, there hasn't been a meeting, so nothing to report there. Marie, did you have anything you wanted to comment on about the Governance Committee or issues? We will Sorry, be I just couldn't get it on mute. Okay. We will be discussing um, transitioning to our new representatives um, for the new fiscal year on the agenda a little bit later, but that's the only governance issue that I think we're currently looking at. 
uh, nominating committee um, in preparation for the for the next meeting. I was looking at the bylaws and. The nominating committee is a standing committee that needs to be comprised of at least two outgoing representatives of the user council. Uh, so we'll be needing two of those people to serve, um, probably plus myself, to present uh, nominations for next year's representatives. We'll discuss that a little bit more at, uh, toward the end of the meeting. No special committees. Any comments about the nominating committee or process at this point? Okay. Moving on to our business items. Uh, check out Limit, Limit Survey. Let me make that correction of 50 items. So that had it finished with the time survey from like the, uh, the previous one, and it was uh, limited by you had to address which library you were from as well as you had access to duplicate voting. So it came out that uh, 16 were in favor uh, and it's over against, um, with one kind of yes, but with restrictions on student uh, checkout. How would the council like to move forward with uh, the results of the survey? We can. We can implement it um, pretty quickly. So it was a, a fairly close vote, 16 yes, 12 no. I mean, this, this is about the, I mean, I know the different libraries have different opinions, but our patrons really want to be able to just gather more stuff. And I, I imagine many, many people patrons would really like to check out more stuff. I mean, especially for us, it especially hit parents who are checking out the natural picture books. I think we may have somewhat of a biased perspective as the former version of libraries. I believe our limit used to be 99, which I'm sure we would all love that, but I doubt we're going to get that. So. Okay, so the membership has been surveyed, and we've got a result there. Um, we can have someone suggest that we take a vote to uh, increase that limit to 50 now, or should we put it on as an action item for the next meeting to be voted on? Is this is Beth. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Dia. I, I was just going to ask. Um, Twenty-eight libraries responding seems kind of small considering how many libraries are in Sage. You I was going to make the same. Um, statement. I'm wondering, you know, we don't have any way to know is this a fairly representative across or is it a few here or there. So I'm a little concerned about just taking a vote now, not knowing how this kind of, you know, represents the whole. Brent, this is Beth. You had indicated that the um, the survey takers indicated the library they were from. Yeah, I could list oh. the, um, the libraries if, if you'd like. Um, there were 29 responses actually, so there was that one response that said yes, but with conditions on students. So, I mean, I guess I would also comment that not surprisingly the majority of the respondents were public libraries. And I believe that the community college libraries and the school libraries often have their own limits anyway. And we only have 33 public libraries. So that's actually a pretty decent process for the public libraries. Okay. I'm 
not including the um, resource sharing part. Hello. <coughs> this is Lynn from the Flintry uh, Health Resource Center, and we have our own limits as well. So the budget is well taken. Thanks for that. This is Beth. If libraries um, can establish more restrictive limits, I guess I just was trying to figure out with our policies how much do we have to stay in agreement? Can we, you know, potentially move all the publics to this limit? I mean, I'll be honest, one of the things that drives me nuts about this consortium is that we do not have consistent policies among us, just like the library. Like, you know, we have libraries that have different checkout times. Um, you know, I don't know. I find it frustrating. I find it frustrating. Um, it looks like only three of the responses were not from public libraries, so that would basically mean that we had 25 of the 33 public libraries responded. Yeah, 25 out of 33 is, is good. <coughs> if we ever get the circulation committee going again, um, we might look at having a different checkout tier or smaller or um, school libraries that they could opt into. We don't want to have too many variations, but it seems like we already do have some of that going on. This is Dia with that with all the discussions that I I removed my objection. Okay. This is Anne from Hunter Valley High School. I limit the students to um, five books to be checked out because they forget where they are and we lose too many books. But the most of all of them, including the staff, have public library cards and that's where they check out the 35 to 50. I would like to make a motion that we vote on this today because summer's coming and people want to check out books and that's really what, to me, what we're all about. Okay, we have a motion to take a vote on increasing the checkout limit from 35 to 50. We have a second. I'll second that. This is Linda from the Plain Tree Health Resource Center. Okay. So the motion is to increase the limit from 35 to 50. Are there any objections? Uh, I just have a clarification. Um, would that be immediately or in the, your meeting packet that you mentioned, possibly waiting until May to come on? Well, uh, that was up for the I left I was going to leave that up for the council to decide so it sounds like the motion is to make it effective immediately is that accurate yes that was that was my intent yes okay yeah. So we've clarified that the motion is to increase from 35 to 50, effective immediately. That's been moved and seconded. Any objections? Okay, hearing none, that passes unanimous, unanimously. Okay, moving on to the... Hey, Harry, I just yeah. have one quick question. Okay. Um, 
so with that um, motion passing, we'll, we'll make the increase. And my assumption is that's going to be the SAGE default policy. And then if there are individual sites that want to limit, like schools or don't already currently have a lower limit, um, we would set that for those particular sites. Does that make sense? I guess I'm just clarifying this is the SAGE default policy. Correct. Okay. That's my understanding. All right. Moving on to the catalog survey. David, how is that going? Actually, I'm going to report on that, Perry, instead. Okay. This is Beth. All right. Um, I, I took the survey down off the website since it had been up for six weeks and gathered the, search res, uh, the survey results and actually it was very positive. Um, we actually had an approval rating of 4.29 out of 5 and um, there were lots of good suggestions offered of, you know, what people liked, what things they thought um, could improve the catalog and so I listed all of those and I don't want to um, take a lot of time to to list them all, but um, I think there's definitely some things that we can do to refine search limits, um, to add more things to the catalog, make them more prominently displayed. A lot of people said that they wanted plot descriptions, and we list those, um, but I think I guess making sure that more records have them and that the description is more prominently displayed. So there's things like that that we can um, do to kind of improve improve the system. So I was really thankful that people didn't just um, that they took the time to actually indicate something that we could do or change. So I guess um, how should I publish that. I mean, do you want me to just stick the spreadsheet up on the web? Do you want me to just highlight the suggestions in a document? How do you want me to provide feedback from the survey to the group? I would suggest um, a highlight report Okay. summarizing the number of respondents um, the main feedback. Okay, I will do that. Did you mention the number of respondents? I didn't, didn't oh. get that. Sorry, I did not, but I can look real quick here. Or maybe I can't. My sense was that it was around 180. Wow. I don't have this um, spreadsheet up in front of me and I mean, I've got the results, but I don't have the line total. Okay. Hey, Beth, this is Anne from Hood and Rayleigh High School. I just have a question on that. I'm yeah. glad to hear that the survey was positive and the outcome. And you're going to post it, and then we as the council are going to look at it, and then are we going to like vote on or discuss some of the changes, or what's the outcome? Um, that's a good question, and um, I was, I sat uh, down last is, night, uh, go ahead. So this is David, um, outcomes in terms of the uh, results of the user survey, um, I, I can say that uh, one outcome will be to use these as a focus for future training. Uh, for instance, with respect to lack of um, plot description, you know, blurbs or summaries in bibliographic records. One of the things I was going to do, Anne, as I summarized the um, suggestions, was to then um, list some recommendations of changes to the catalog or things that I know that I could do. For instance, one of the things that people wanted to be able to do was to be able to search young adult throughout the whole system. So my recommendation would be able to create a grouping that would list underneath the SAGE library system 
kind of like a shelving location, but sage-wide, um, where I would gather all of the young adult collections from each of the libraries and have that be a search. So things like that, taking the suggestions and then seeing what we can do either programmatically or adjustments to fields that are displayed, um, I would make those recommendations and then that's something that the, the council would, could certainly prioritize um, or indicate their support for. Sounds great. Thank you, Beth. You're welcome. Beth, this is Mary Finney. Yes, Mary. And I don't I don't know if this is feasible or not, but I would like to see how many how many of the suggestions were were things that you said, oh that's really cool and, and maybe did immediately. Um, so an idea of which of the of, of the suggestions were were uh, immediately taken undertaken, I think would be helpful for my my public to say, oh gosh, they they had these 53 suggestions and they they moved right on five of them. I think that would be great PR. Oh, okay, yeah, I can certainly indicate the ones that will be um, implemented more quickly than others. Since I just looked at the serve suggestions, I haven't implemented any of them yet, although a couple suggestions were more cover images, which we have done. Um, so Okay, any more discussion on the catalog survey report? Moving on to the Evergreen Conference sponsorship. Buzzy, would, do you have a figure for us? Um, well, I mean, I, I'd leave the, um, the figure up to the council, but um, Evergreen Conference, you know, the River, um, there are a few different levels of sponsorship. They go, um, for organizations, they go all the way from $500 up to um, I was actually thinking more in the maybe one to two thousand range if the council would be willing to do that. Uh, I will say we do actually, if we do uh, at the fifteen hundred dollar level or higher, we do actually get a registration fee waiver. Um, so that would save us two hundred two hundred fifty dollars on that or rent registration. To And um, the different levels do include um, different, um, different benefits as well. They include different um, size acknowledgments in the conference program, logo link on the conference website. Um, if we sponsored an event, um, like the Hackfest event, uh, it would also include uh, a sign at the event itself that it was sponsored by a state library. Um, looking at the financial report, it, it looks like Sage could afford a couple thousand dollars. Beth, do you have an idea of what line item that money might be taken out of? Would that be uh, general funds or uh, unappropriated funds or? Um, our contract, um, the contract with our library district is probably going to be well, by the end of the year, will probably be well under $2,000. 
you know, that's kind of a weird line item to get out of. But you know, there's not a lot of it's not there's not a lot of big deal if you take out one on that item just as long as the material and services balance is not really so. Okay. Right, somebody wants to look at the profit and loss. I'm trying to find where that is. I don't know. I think Perry it might be general fund. We do have enough funds in reserve. So I don't know whether that would be unallocated or general. Depends on what you mean by reserve. Um, we can't pull from the inappropriate ending fund now. No. But you're saying Brent's salary is projected to be a couple thousand dollars under. Yeah, I mean, some of that is just a billing delay, but we're only at 35.53% of. Now that one's actually hard to tell. So if I'm reading that number correctly, it's 210.1. .1, takes 104,789 and subtracts out 45,471. Is that correct? That must be correct. In which case, let's see. Beth, obviously it's not very often that um, we get to host a conference in our area, so I think it's, it's a pretty big deal. It would nice, it'd be nice to promote SAGE as a part of that. We are definitely an evergreen success story, too, in terms of, like, especially in terms of just the multi-type We do have 11,000 budgeted for our contingency, so which is kind of our discretionary fund, so it could have come out of that, if nothing else. I think that would be good. Okay, do I hear, yeah, do I hear a motion to expend the suggested $2,000 for SAGE to be an official sponsor of the Evergreen Conference? Do we need to add to come out of a contingency for that? I, I'll, I'll move that. This is Linda from the Plain Tree Health Resource Center, and I will make that motion to be paid through contingency. Okay. This, this is Ann, and I'll second it. Okay, it's been moved and seconded for $2,000 to be expended out of contingency to support sponsorship of the 2015 Evergreen Conference. Any objections? Or any, any more discussion, I guess? Any objections to that? Okay. That passes unanimously. 
Thank you. Okay, moving on to the SAGE budget approval. We did uh, see this without any, well, with some minor changes from, uh, as were discussed in the last meeting. Um, Wallawa, I checked, and they, both the Wallawa Public and the Wallawa, Cam Wallawa County Library are listed in the member ship uh, schedule, uh, made a change to Columbia Gorge's fee level, and that edit is uh, here in this document. Uh, so the most notable element is the 8% general increase um, to compensate for decreasing uh, career support and loss of EOU as a member. Any discussion about the proposed budget? Additions, corrections? I have a correction. This is Anne from high school, if it matters. I have a correction. Our population isn't the 1248, if that makes a difference. It's... I'm not sure the population figures have been updated. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I don't know when those were last updated. They probably certainly need to be. The only time it really matters is if you're up there they're off so much that you're not in the correct size category. So I think there were there are quite a few libraries that no. our roommate libraries have not. Okay, hearing no discussion, do I hear a motion to approve the proposed budget and member fee schedule? This is Darlene on sale and I propose we accept it. Thank you, Darlene. Is there a second? This is Dia, I'll second. Mary Finney. Okay, I think Dia beat you out there, Mary. I'll log her down as the second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the 2015-16 budget, proposed budget, and member fee schedule. Any objections? Hearing none, the budget and member fee, sh fee schedule is approved. And now on to the SAGE software use policy. Um, this is in anticipation of just some requests coming in to use our GoToMeeting subscription that we need guidance on, say from uh, Leo wanting to use it for their meetings or uh, I could foresee that I really would want to use it to communicate with uh, my branch staff, but I should really get my own. This is a Sage software, and uh, unless it was uh, unless it was Sage related and not specifically organizational related, uh, that would not qualify for use of the GoToMeeting subscription per our terms of use. So this policy I crafted uh, based on. Uh, a software policy from King County Library System and a personal use of district resources policy that we had here at uh, Baker County. And it uh, specifies that authorized use is limited to Sage Library System staff, user council and committee use uh, purposes and designated Sage member cooperatives such as uh, collaborative grant projects like the Ready to Learn group and uh, the SAGE staff also would allow uh, Brent's use of that for coordinating the Evergreen Conference. 
there any proposed additions or corrections, changes to this proposed policy? Comments? Um, one comment, this is David, and uh, that's to say that this policy seems perfectly fine to me. I, I consider staff training to be an official purpose of my position, so I have no objections. Thank you, David. Okay, do I hear a motion to adopt the software usage policy as presented. This is Dia, I'll still move that we adopt this policy as presented. Okay, do I hear a second? A second. Who is that seconding? Delia. Thank you, Delia. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to adopt the policy. Any objections? Hearing none, that is adopted. Thank you. And now for the nominating committee. Uh, the outgoing members um, are Delia, Teresa Chandler of Elgin, Pat Florenzen, Amy Hutchinson, Darlene Johnson, and Linda Stahl. Uh, so we need two of those people to serve on the nominating committee to present the uh, nominations for new representatives at the at the May meeting. Can I get two volunteers from from those people that I mentioned? Terry, I can be on the nominating committee if you'd like me to. This is Darlene. Darlene, thank you. And I'm sorry, I wasn't clear. So you want two from this list of six? Correct. Okay, yeah, I will as well. This is Delia. Thank you, Delia. Okay, and I will be the third person. So uh, our responsibilities, I guess, are to encourage um, people to volunteer or make some calls to get people to uh, agree to be nominated at the next meeting. Okay. Yes. And I recommend that the nominating committee ask Jeff from the Dallas. <laughs> Not now. It's our time to think, but you're welcome. <laughs> and Jeff is the new director there at the Dallas? Correct. All right, welcome. I'm kind of looking over the list of the about 15,000, and we're a rather small group, so I was like, well, <laughs> <laughs> who Okay, so for the next meeting, uh, which I think ordinarily, uh, let me see, the calendar would be held May 19th the third Tuesday. Uh, we, according to our bylaws, do need to have an annual membership meeting at that time. Um, if we want to have a, uh, as many members show up and meet in person, Tuesday may not be the best day for that. I'm thinking if people need to travel. So we might look at uh, a Friday two Fridays toward the end of that month, 22nd or 29th. How does everyone feel about that? Of May? Of May. Well, the 22nd is the beginning of Memorial Day weekend, so I'm just wondering about that one. Oh, that yeah, that's a good point. So that would be bad. How about the 29th, then? We 
Yes. And I think the last time we did, can we do it like a little bit later? Like at one or noon or something? I think we did, yeah. Are you suggesting we do that and keep it on the 19th? I can help people with traveling. Sorry, Buzzy, were you, were you suggesting that we keep it on the 19th and have it at 1 or have it at 1 on the 29th? Okay. And for central location, um, Hermiston or Pendleton seems like they have traditionally been the best spots. Any discussion on where we this should? This is Mary at Pendleton. Yeah. We we could Pendleton would we could probably find a place for us. <laughs> and this is Maria at, at Hermiston. You guys are always welcome. So either one. Now you have to choose. Okay. Does anybody have a preference between Pendleton and Hermiston? I think I'm going to say Hermiston due to the larger meeting room space. Well, we'll book the room, and if it's changed, it's not a problem. Okay. We have a fairly good meeting size area also in Pendleton, but I'd have to check the location, check the availability, I mean. Okay. So I will say officially that we'll plan on it being May 29th at 1 p.m. in Hermiston. Pendleton does have a better pub. That's true, they do. <laughs> Come on. Carrie, will there also? <laughs> Sir, was there a comment there that needed to be is made? There a, is there going to be a setup for those who cannot travel? Yeah, I would expect we can still use GoToMeeting to broadcast. Okay, thank yeah. you. Okay. Uh, two added items on the agenda, Learning Express uh, Mark Records. So Learning Express, as most everyone is familiar, is a state, uh, Oregon State Library provided uh, database. And uh, in January, in the Letters to Libraries Online, they did mention that MARC records for content available through Learning Express is available to include in our catalogs. Um, so uh, Cheryl wanted to propose that we go ahead and add those MARC records. Is that correct, Cheryl? Yes, I think it would be helpful to our patrons and make it easier for them to discover all the resources that are available through that database. Um, this is about the, given the way that Learning Express authenticates, would, I mean, it's nice that it would say that it's there, but wouldn't it be awkward to get it to authenticate properly? Because it should have our own 
that, this is Beth. I was going to ask how Learning Express is currently authenticated. Is it IP or is it by login and password? No, there's like an authentication token built into your. Uh, You're cutting out, Buzzy. I couldn't quite hear you. There's an authentication token that's built into the URL itself. So if you look at the URL and the Liars website, they're really complicated. Okay, we can build unique 856 strings. Um, the records would be a little bulky, but we could create a separate 856 for each library that wants to um, use Learning Express through the catalog, which is probably going to be mainly the publics. Uh, actually, I'm wondering if maybe we could use the same library and maybe they could see if DL yeah, would be willing to use the consortium, our own authentication. So I would suggest as well, just a generic Sage one. And the only cost to it, I think, would be if people use it, then the stats would get attributed to any particular library. But uh, that wouldn't be like too big a deal. No, that sounds like a good solution. Do we want to implement um, for some libraries while we're working on that joint? Well, I think that everyone has the individual now going directly out of websites or however to Library Ex or Learning Express. Um, and I think that would probably still stay there, am I correct? Yeah. But then we'd have this other avenue also where... So does, does more investigation need to be done before? Um, I think we just need to contact Arlene Weibel at the State Library. She should be able to tell us about the possibility. Well, uh, this is David, and I have a uh, comment to make, which is I'm not, I'm not sure if all member libraries in the consortium um, have subscribed to the same set of resources through Learning Express or not, but regardless, um, I think we need to make an effort to um, coordinate the importation of these records to prevent uh, duplication in the catalog. David, I would be importing them, um, oh, so okay. there would be just, just one record. So okay. we just have to figure out the 856. Um, well, Worst case scenario, I mean, if the 856 proves unresolvable, um, we can always, I suppose, insert a statement instructing uh, patrons to access the resource um, through the through their library web page. So I'm hearing uh, consensus that we move forward with adding the Learning Express mark records, uh, preferably with a generic uh, authentication token. Any objections to that? All right. Any more discussion? I guess just uh, who's going to be the one to contact the State Library? Uh, this is Brent. I, I wouldn't mind contacting the State Library. Uh, okay. Thanks, Brent. I mean, I, I was going to volunteer, but I'll let you volunteer. I'm on the database licensing advisory committee there, too. So we're going to be meeting soon as well.
Okay. Moving on to the other item added, uh, changing the regular meeting time back to 10 o'clock a.m. Buzzy, 10.30 is yeah. problematic for you guys? Well, I think we just all prefer having it earlier in the day. Um, I, I, I don't, maybe I've got me, I don't actually remember discussing moving the meeting time. Um, I don't think we did. <laughs> I mean, yeah, there was, we just talked here among, the, among us. We, we would we would like it earlier in the day. It works out uh, in, in, uh, for as far as staffing at, a, at my small library, uh, the, the 10 to noon works out better for our staffing levels. That's a good point. Okay. Well, for the July meeting where we transition officers and such and probably should establish a uh, regular meeting time, so I will craft a document um, for approval that has 10 a.m. as the regular meeting time. For the May meeting, of course, it'll be at 1 o'clock. <laughs> okay. Review of task assignments. I haven't really been keeping track of that. Does anyone um, want to throw out what they're going to do? I, I guess I remember Brent saying he's going to contact the state library. Yeah. I'll be in Salem at the beginning of April for a general state database licensing and advisory committee meeting as well. I'll bring it up there as a in the meeting. Okay. Yes. Nominating committees established. We'll start collecting nominees. I'll get the uh, announcement of the budget sent out. Buzzy, for the sponsorship um, of $2,000, do you send an invoice for that? Do we just cut you a check? Um, I will check with the um, administrative entity that runs everything. Okay. Beth, you're going to compile a synopsis of the cataloging survey findings? Yes, I was just going to add that, yeah, and um, I'll also be sending out some courier notifications via the circle serve. Okay, and the 50 item checkout limit can be implemented later today, this week? Yep, we can do that. Okay. Brent and I will coordinate that. All right, I think that is all. Any other discussion? Hearing none, do I have a motion to adjourn? Ryan and Legrand makes the motion to adjourn. And Sterling Johnson makes a second. Okay. Any objections? Um. Who's that Darlene. <coughs> Hearing no objections, the meeting is adjourned. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you in May. Thank you. Right. Thank you very much, Perry.